Becoming a millionaire or retiring a millionaire isn't as unheard of or out of reach as it used to be in the past. I mean, 1,700 people in America become a millionaire every single day. That means 70 people are becoming new millionaires in the United States every hour. So by the time this video is done, we're gonna have a new handful of millionaires. What's up everybody, I am Just Putin Singh from the MinorityMindset.com where money minds rethink rich. If you went out and you asked the majority of people how do most people become millionaires, they'll tell you that it's because of rich parents or being gifted or having a trust fund or winning the lottery or getting really lucky. You need to have one of these five things if you wanna become a millionaire. But that's just not true. 88% of millionaires were self-made. These are people that created their wealth and their money themselves that did not have everything gifted to them. Yeah, you had 12% of millionaires that had rich parents or had money given to them or had all these privileges, but the vast majority of millionaires created their wealth themselves. So if you want to understand how to become a millionaire yourself, you got to understand what these people did. Out of the people that became self-made millionaires, there are three general categories or ways that people became millionaires. The first is start a very successful business. Number two is earn a very high salary. Or third, invest a little bit of your money every time you get paid. Look, some of the most successful people in the world are people that start and build their own businesses. But the reality is building a business is not easy and it is not for everybody. It looks cool and looks attractive because entrepreneurship is fun, but it is hard work and you do not get weekends off, you do not get evenings off. Building a business is hard and it's not for everybody. And so that is not the path to becoming a millionaire for the majority of people. And if you look at trying to earn a super high salary, like people earn it two, three, four, five, six hundred thousand dollars a year or more. That's not really accessible for most people either because maybe you're gonna need a special degree, maybe you gotta go out and become a doctor, or maybe you gotta go and become a CEO of a big company. But yeah, that's possible for some people, but not everybody. So I guess both of these two options are out for most people. But the third option, investing a little bit of money every time you get paid, is actually how most people become millionaires. It's a slow and gradual process where every time you get paid, regardless of how much money you're getting paid, you put aside a little bit of money and you keep slowly investing it and you let this money that you're investing grow and compound. And as this money is growing and compound, you keep fueling the fire because every time you get paid, you're just putting more and more money into this ball that's growing and building you wealth. That way you can become a millionaire in your lifetime by letting your money go out and work. I'm gonna show you a few different ways that you can do that. But before I get into that, I need you to do me a quick favor and smash the thumbs up button below. Let's go over some quick numbers. Let's start by going over something that most people should be able to do. Let's assume that you can put aside $10 a day, which is right around $300 a month. If you take this $10 a day, $300 a month, and you keep investing it every single month, I'll talk about where and how to invest it in just a little bit, but let's assume that you can get a 7% annual return on your money on average. So this is a below average return, okay? Something conservative. But if you keep investing this $300 a month over the next 45 years, so if you do this from 21 to 66, the $300 a month is going to grow to $1.1 million on the side. Now, if you're saying that you don't got $10 a day or $300 a month, yet you also have a $300 a month car payment or more, then you might want to rethink where and how you're spending your money. If you want to be a little bit more aggressive, and now you can put aside $20 a day or $600 a month, and you can get the same 7% return, which is below average, below the historical average, then you will be able to grow this money to 2.2 million dollars over a lifetime on the side. And let's have some fun. What if you could be even more aggressive and you could put aside $100 a day, which is right around, let's say, $3,000 a month. If you can do that and you can maintain the same below average return, then over your lifetime, you will be able to grow your money to $11 million on the side. Now, while this all sounds good in theory, it's still theory because now the question is, how do you actually make it happen? Because me sitting here saying that if you put $300 a month into your investments, that you would have grown it to $1.1 million is kind of like the people who say things like, if you invested 45 cents in Tesla or Bitcoin, then the 45 cent investment would have been worth $4.4 million today. So you are very not smart for not making that 44 cent investment 20 years ago. It's impossible to predict what is going to happen. So the question is, is what do you do today to actually build these millions in your lifetime? How do you do this practically and how do you make it happen? Well, the first part of making it happen is you gotta work on this side of the equation. How do you get this extra cash? How do you find this extra cash every single month? And there's two things you gotta do on the mental side of how do you actually get this cash? 
The first thing you gotta do is you gotta stop living in your feelings. We live in a culture where people live in their feelings, where when people want something, they want it now. And when you want it now, you're gonna do whatever it takes to get it. And when I say do whatever it takes, I don't mean put in the hustle and get the cash to actually be able to afford it. I mean do whatever it takes, like put it on your credit card or finance it or pay it off in installments. If the way your mind works is I just made a thousand dollars, so how can I spend this thousand dollars? I can go on this vacation, I can buy these shoes, I can go out to eat here. You will never have a chance to achieve this. It's not possible, okay? Because the first thing you gotta do is you gotta break out of your feelings and understand that now anytime you get paid does not mean that you gotta go out and spend this money. Anytime you get paid means now you have more money to invest because you gotta put some money aside towards your investments. So the first thing you gotta do is you gotta stop living in your feelings and then you gotta stop spending all your money. You gotta figure out what that right investment amount is for you. I recommend 15% of your incomes. So anytime you make a dollar, 15 cents should go towards your investments, but I'm just a random guy on YouTube. You gotta make your own decisions. The second thing you do after you start putting some extra money aside is now you gotta start growing the pot. You gotta start earning more money. The thing that bugs me about traditional financial planners and traditional financial planning is that traditional financial planning focuses just on pinching pennies. But the thing that you gotta understand is that at the end of the day, a penny saved is just a penny. Yes, you should not be blowing all your money. Yes, you should not spend your money as soon as you get it. Yes, you gotta be smart with your money. But I also want you to work to grow the pie instead of just working to figure out how can you squeeze some extra pennies because at the end of the day, there's a limit to how little you can spend but there's no limit to how much you can earn. So once you understand how to spend your money, once you understand how to live below your means, once you understand how to build a system where anytime you get paid, 15% of your paycheck is automatically gonna get invested, the next thing you gotta do is worry about how can I grow the pie? How can I make the pie bigger? Because if you're making $40,000 a year and you're investing 15%, that's good. But if you're making $400,000 a year and now you're investing 15%, that's even better. Again, going back to the beginning of this video, most people are not gonna be able to start their own business and most people are not gonna earn a doctor's salary. But what you can do is you can supplement your income. If you're not happy with how much money you're earning, maybe you can earn a second job. Maybe you can ask for a raise. Maybe you can get a promotion. Maybe you can start a side hustle or do something to earn some extra cash. There are a lot of ways that you can supplement the income that you're getting right now. That way you have more money to grow this pot. That way you have more money going towards your investments. So the first thing you gotta do if you wanna get this is you gotta work on this. That means you gotta stop living in your feelings and you gotta find a way to earn some more money that way you have this cash to grow. Once you got this cash right here, the next thing you gotta figure out is how do you make this interest, this return on your money? What do you do with this extra cash that you're investing? By the way, if you're interested in learning more about my 15% rule and how to build a financial system that works to build you wealth, to build your savings, that way you understand how to use your money, I already made a video on YouTube where I explained how all of that works. So if you wanna watch that video, I will link it for you in the description below. But let's talk about how to actually invest your money now. The whole idea of investing is you wanna create this machine that is printing you money without you physically having to work. But in order to create this machine, you gotta invest one of two things. Either you gotta invest your time or you gotta invest your money. Now, for a lot of people, either you're not gonna have the time or you're not gonna wanna put in the time to do it. So I'm gonna focus it on the passive investments because a passive investment is where all you're doing is you're taking some of your cash and you're putting it towards creating this machine that is printing you money without you physically having to go to work because you're going to work to get paid. Now, you're getting this paycheck and you're gonna take a piece of that paycheck and you're gonna put it towards buying this machine that's gonna print you money. Now, it's not an actual money printing machine because you can go to jail for that, but it's a kind of a theoretical machine that's gonna print you money through your investments. The whole idea behind making money is the more value that you can provide to the marketplace, the more money you're gonna make. That's why doctors earn more money than cashiers because doctors provide more value to the marketplace than cashiers do. Now, this doesn't mean that your life is not valuable or that you're not a valuable person as a cashier. This just means in the economic marketplace, a doctor provides more financial value so they attract more money than a cashier does. So now when it comes to your investments, the whole idea here is you wanna put your money in a place that is going to create value or attract value. So you wanna use your money as a tool to kinda of create this value thing, that way it can continue to 
to pay you without you having to physically work to continually build value. So maybe there's other people involved or there's a team involved where this machine is now working to build value and create value for you because you have put your money towards it and your time is out doing something else. The most accessible way to do that is by putting your money in the stock market because the stock market is a place where you can go out and invest in big companies. So Amazon, McDonald's, Facebook, these companies trade on the stock market. So when you go out and you buy shares in a company like Amazon or McDonald's, you become one of the owners of Amazon or McDonald's. Now you don't get to tell Amazon or McDonald's how to run the company and you don't got to go to work for Amazon or McDonald's. But when these companies make more money, so do you. Maybe your stock price will go up because if you buy a stock for $100 a share and it goes up to $200 a share and you sell it, you just made $100. The second way you can make money is through dividends. When a company like McDonald's has a whole bunch of cash in their bank account at the end of the year, they can take some of this cash and just give it away to the shareholders, people like you, investors, through dividends. And so these dividends are literally just cash payments that you get every three months, every quarter for doing nothing except owning the right company. Between 1926 and 2008, 18. The average return for the S&P 500, which is an index in the stock market, which all it means is it's a group that represents the top 500 companies in the stock market. This S&P 500 over those years grew by an average of 10 to 11 percent a year on average. This doesn't mean that every single year the stock market is going to go up by 10 to 11 percent. That means over the long run, the stock market has grown by 10 to 11 percent a year for almost the last 100 years. But this also includes the fact that sometimes you're gonna have stock market crashes and other times you're gonna have stock market rallies. Over the long run, you've seen the stock market grow by around 10% a year for the last century. So if the stock market continues to grow at its previous rates and you can just invest your money and even get a below average return, then retiring a millionaire is no problem because you can just throw your money into the stock market and hopefully get the same returns and boom, there you have it, the millionaire status. Except there's a couple issues with that. The first issue, is many people do not believe that the stock market is going to continue to grow at the same rate that we saw happen over the last century because our economy is a whole lot bigger. So it's not as easy for our economy to grow as fast as it once did, which is why we might not see the same returns in the stock market over the next century. The second issue is you gotta know how to actually invest your money in the market because if you just take your money and you randomly put it in some stocks, then that doesn't mean you're gonna meet the stock market return, right? Because the S&P 500 is an average of 500 companies in the stock market. It's not the entire stock market. During the last century, you had a lot of stocks go bankrupt and go bust. And so if you invest in a company that goes bankrupt or bust, then you lose your money and you won't get these returns even though the stock market went up because the company you invested in went down. So now given these circumstances, how can you still get a good return in the stock market if our economy isn't growing as fast as it once used to? And how do you invest your money in the stock market without worrying about the company you invested in going bankrupt? Let's start with this. When it comes to investing, you got to first understand the correlation between risk and return. Because in general, you can get a better return if you're willing to take on higher risk. And so if the general stock market sees lower returns in the future, you can still try to get higher returns, but that might mean you have to take on higher risk. Now, one of the ways that you can mitigate risk, meaning lower the risk, is by having the right education and understanding what you're doing. Because if you have more knowledge, then you can kind of lower some of this risk. But you got to understand, yes, you can still get higher returns, but you got to understand how to kind of manage this risk too. So the S&P 500 index, the one that I just talked about a minute ago that was averaging 10 to 11% returns a year, the S&P 500 is a group of the 500 largest and most established companies in the stock market. And so when a company is large and established, it's not going to be able to grow as fast. And so if you want to get better returns, then you're going to have to invest in a company that's a little bit more innovative, that's trying to grow because now these companies have more room to grow because when a company is already large and it controls the entire market and it doesn't have that much more room to grow, it can't grow as fast versus a company that's smaller and trying to innovate and grow. There's a whole lot of room for opportunity and so they can see much better returns. So if you're trying to get better returns, then you can't be making the same investment decisions that people were making 30, 40, 50 years ago because back then in the 70s, if you wanted to invest your money, all you had to do was invest your money in the general stock market and you knew the United States economy was booming and you knew the United States economy had a lot of room to grow and so these big established companies still had so much room for opportunity and growth which allowed these easy general stock market funds to grow and boom which allowed people to grow their money and compound their money very quickly. 
you might not have that same opportunity today just because our economy is so big and these companies are so big, they don't have the same room for growth as they once did, or at least that's what people think. And so if you want to continue to get that same growth, you got to be a little bit more innovative. That means instead of just investing in your traditional large blue chip companies and these funds that give you exposure to the general stock market, maybe you got to start looking at innovative companies or value companies or growth companies because these are smaller companies that are kind of like more of your startups that have a lot of room for growth. Now, obviously there's more risk here because if you're investing in a startup, there's a chance that this company will fail. But if you want to continue to get those higher returns, you got to start educating yourself here. That way you can make smarter decisions. That way you can get the better returns. Does it come with more risk? Yes, because you are never guaranteed to make money when you invest. You might even lose money. So make sure you always do your own due diligence and never blindly listen to a random guy on YouTube. Now, when it comes to actually investing your money and putting your money to work, there's a couple different ways that you can invest your money in the stock market. The first way is you can find individual companies to invest in. So you can go out and invest in individual companies like McDonald's or Tesla or Facebook or whatever. But when you invest your money in these companies, you take on all the risk because if you invest your money in McDonald's and the McDonald's executives run the company into the ground and the company goes bankrupt, now your investment account is bust. So one of the things that you can do to protect yourself, especially if you're not planning on becoming a full-time investor or if you don't plan on spending at least a few hours a week researching your investments, that one of the things that you can do instead of investing in individual companies is just invest in ETFs. An ETF is a fund that gives you exposure to a whole bunch of companies. That way now you don't got to worry about trying to be in the stock picking game because you can invest in a fund that gives you exposure to a whole bunch of different companies. You can buy and sell shares of an ETF the exact same way you do stocks. The only difference between an ETF and a stock is when you invest your money in a stock, you get exposure to one company, but when you invest your money into an ETF, you get exposure to a whole group of companies. So kind of like what I talked about before. If you just wanted to get general exposure to the stock market, then you could invest in an ETF like VOO or SPY. Both of these ETFs give you exposure to the S&P 500, and both of these ETFs give you exposure to the top 500 companies in the stock market. Now, again, this goes back to the concern like we just talked about. Yes, this will give you exposure to the top 500 companies, but we just don't know if the stock market and our economy is gonna be able to grow at the same rate that we saw happen over the last century. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. But the thing that you have to understand about these is these typically come with less risk because if the economy continues to grow, then chances are our big companies are going to continue to grow, which means chances are these funds are going to continue to grow. So less risk and less potential return, however, is more of a safer investment over the long term. Yes, you might see market crashes, which makes it kind of risky in the short term. But over the long term, if you believe in the United States economy, then these are generally kind of your safer investments. If you're looking for more value type investments where you can hopefully try to see bigger returns but also come with more risk then you can look at investing in funds like a r k k this is arc and q q q again these are just examples make sure you do your own due diligence and as a quick disclaimer i do have some of my own money in voo and arc so these are a couple examples of etfs that are trying to invest in more of your value companies more of your innovative companies that way you can hopefully see bigger returns over the long term but again it comes with more risk so you got to do your own due diligence and understand how to balance it out the key for this type of stock market investing to work is you got to understand that this is not a one-time investment that you're going to make. This is something that you got to keep consistently investing. Like I talked about that 15% rule earlier, where anytime you get paid, a portion of your paycheck is going to go directly to your investments. That way you're consistently investing a little bit of money. That way investments can compound here. Your money keeps growing here and you keep adding fuel to the fire because anytime you get paid, you're adding more money to the fire. You're adding more money to this machine that is working to make you more money. Before I move on to the next way that you can invest your money, if you do want to learn more about how to do this and how to create a passive system that where your money can automatically be invested and how to find a brokerage that can do this for you for free our team broke down how to do this on our website the minority mindset.com and you can read that article by clicking the link in the description below the second way that you can invest your money which is actually my favorite way to invest my money is by investing your money in real estate the way real estate investing works is you can go out and you can buy a property like a house and when you buy this property so let's say this is me I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna buy this property. Gotta draw me a nice mustache. I go out and buy this property and then I'm gonna rent this property to somebody else. I'm not gonna live here. I'm gonna let this person come here for their family. They're gonna live in this property. They're gonna use my house. They're gonna live there. And in exchange for them living in my property, 
every single month they're gonna send me a one thousand dollar check because that is their rent payment and now out of this one thousand dollars i'm going to use this to pay my taxes my insurance my maintenance my management fees my vacancy costs and then if i have any debt on the property it's also going to pay some debt and if i do this the right way i'm going to have some money left over every single month and these profits go into my pocket for my investment the thing that really differentiates real estate investing like this and investing in stocks like i talked about before is when i invest my money in real estate i am looking for passive income i am looking for cash flow the most important thing here is not how much i think this property is going to be worth in five years or ten years in the stock market that's what a lot of people are looking for they're looking for companies that are going to be worth a whole lot more that way they can sell their stock for a big profit here i'm not really interested in that the most important thing here is this this cash flow how much money do i gotta invest today and how much money am i gonna make every single month so it's a different investment strategy because here my goal is that passive income it's that cash flow and my investment goal is on a low end seven percent but typically i'm looking for an eight percent annual return on my money so if i invest a hundred dollars today I want to get $8 back next year and the year after that and on and on and on. So these are the type of returns that I'm looking for when I invest my money in real estate. And this is in the form of passive income or cash flow. The thing that makes real estate a little bit more difficult is in the beginning, while this is called passive income, it's really not passive, especially in the beginning, because you got to jump over this hurdle to understand how real estate investing works. And you got to find the team. I mean, you got to find your real estate agents, your property managers, your contractors, you got to work with city officials. And so if you don't know how any of that works, it's going to be a big time commitment and you need a lot of capital like this property might cost you hundred thousand dollars so you're going to need either a lot of cash you're going to go out to the bank and you got to borrow some money versus if you're investing your money in the stock market you can start with a hundred dollars and it only takes like five minutes here buying a property can take you months you have this element of non-passiveness because you got to find the deals you're going to renovate them you got to get them leased out but once you get the hang of things and once you get this property ready to go you can hand over the keys to a property management company and then it can be fully passive if you know how to do it and so it takes that hurdle to jump over but once you jump over that then it can be completely passive now again the key here to succeed over the long term is to keep compounding your money that means when you have this money growing in this real estate property you got this passive income coming in you you can do a couple things with it you can use this money to go out and go on a nice vacation or you can reinvest this money to go out and buy a new property so that means over the years you're going to save up some more cash to buy another property and then you can use this cash to buy you more properties as well so this cash should help you fuel you to buy more properties quicker that way you can increase the amount of cash flow and passive income you have so it's kind of this compound interest game where it's how fast can you accumulate these properties and how fast can you grow this passive income but now once you understand all the things that i talked about first you got to understand the mental game where you got to stop living in your feelings and you got to stop spending all your money and then you got to work on how to grow the pie how can you attract more money that we have more money to invest then it's all about investing your money and you got to know your goals now you got to invest your money into places where you're going to grow your money and now it's just a math question where can you invest your money what type of returns can you expect and how long is it going to take you to hit that million dollars based off of how much money you're investing once you understand the whole system then it's just a numbers game where you got to just keep following the system and you got to just keep pumping your money into your investments that way you can build this nest egg that's growing to make you wealthier if you enjoyed this video here's the video on stock market etfs that i think you'll love and while you're at it join our free finance and business newsletter and as always keep hustling they also had to get rid of this person with a mustache right here and instead what they did was they replaced that person with a mustache with a computer who automates this investments.